Hey everyone, I'm Jensen. Today is Friday, February 26th. And from who qualifies for the vaccine, how you get one, what the differences are, and what the deal is with Johnson & Johnson, I have all the information you need to know to get in the loop tonight. First, let's look at who currently qualifies for the COVID-19 vaccine. In Ohio, everyone listed in phase 1B is now eligible. So those people include Ohioans 65 and older, school teachers and staff, and those born with or who have early childhood conditions that are carried into adulthood, which put them at a higher risk of complications from COVID-19. That specific list is on your screen right now, and it includes those with sickle cell anemia, Down syndrome, cystic fibrosis, muscular dystrophy, cerebral palsy, spina bifida, and a long list of others. Now that last group, according to Governor Mike DeWine, has had some trouble getting their vaccine and are being turned down by providers. But DeWine made clear that that's not acceptable. That is not right. Those individuals should be able to get their vaccination. Now, DeWine said we're going to continue under phase 1B for a few weeks until we get the vast majority of those who qualify and want to get vaccinated their shots. But once we get through phase 1B, who's up next? Well, DeWine said we would continue dropping ages by fives like we did last time, stopping at age 50. But will anyone else qualify? Yes, but we just don't know who yet. Like school teachers, DeWine said that a few other small groups who are regularly exposed to the virus will be able to get their shots soon too. Before, he's mentioned funeral directors, and there was a lot of conversation after police officers were left out of phase 1B, but again, no specifics on this have been announced. So you'll need to come up with a plan soon because the state is expected to get a healthy bump in vaccine shipment so things should start to speed up soon, but I'll get to that in a bit. Now, let me remind you how you can schedule an appointment and show off some cool tools. The state of Ohio has a portal where you can just type in your county or zip code and a whole list of all the vaccine providers pops up with all the contact info you need to make an appointment. Now let's look locally, specifically at Lucas and Wood counties. In Lucas, appointments become available Thursdays at 6 p.m. For Wood County, that's noon on Fridays. You can go to the Lucas County Health Department website, lucascountyhealth.com, and in the top right-hand corner, just hit schedule appointment. Easy. In Wood County, that website is vaccine.woodcountyhealth.org. If you need help, call your area office on aging or use the United Ways 211 number. For information on registering in all Northwest Ohio counties or in Southeast Michigan, check out the links in the description of this video. Now it's been difficult for some people to find spots and that's because we still have a shortage of the vaccine, but that supply is expected to grow very soon. Next week, Ohio will have 310,000 first doses. So the state will be adding even more vaccine provider sites, including some Meijer and Walmart stores and more independent pharmacies. Plus Rite Aid, Kroger, CVS, Walgreens, and local health departments and hospitals will also have more doses. And DeWine said, once the Johnson & Johnson vaccine is available, Ohio is expected to have another 91 thousand doses during its first week. And what exactly is happening with that Johnson & Johnson vaccine anyway? U.S. regulators decided that the company's single-dose vaccine provides enough protection against COVID-19 for nationwide use, and just hours ago, health advisors voted to endorse it. The FDA is expected to quickly follow that recommendation and make Johnson & Johnson the third vaccine authorized for emergency use in the U.S. But how is it different from the Pfizer and Moderna vaccines? Let's try to break things down quickly. First, let's look at Pfizer and Moderna. Those mRNA vaccines work by directly injecting the genetic instructions for the spike protein on SARS-CoV-2, which is the virus that causes COVID-19. When your immune system confronts that spike protein, your cells learn how to fight it off. So Pfizer and Moderna's vaccines coat the mRNA in a sort of oily shell to get into the cell. And that's where the differences begin. Johnson & Johnson instead uses a harmless host virus to get into the cell. So that altered adenovirus is injected into the cell and the cell's nucleus accepts the DNA strand. Your cell translates that DNA into mRNA, which is the same mRNA that the other vaccines start with. So it contains all the instructions necessary to teach your cell how to build that spike protein. From there, the immunity process is the same. Your cells use those instructions to make SARS-CoV-2's signature spike protein. It releases it out into the body and your immune system gets a practice round at fighting off COVID-19. Now, something I want to make clear, Johns Hopkins doctors say, 
that while the vaccine uses a spike protein DNA, it is impossible for it to alter our human DNA. It in no way will alter the human genome and cannot make any changes to our DNA. So with that in mind, let's continue. Johnson & Johnson's vaccine only requires one dose compared to the current vaccine options that require two. And the rollout of the Pfizer and Moderna mRNA vaccines required ultra cold storage, while the Johnson & Johnson vaccine can be shipped and stored at regular refrigerator temperatures, so between 35 and 46 degrees. But those first two shots were found to be about 95% effective against symptomatic COVID-19. And trials of Johnson & Johnson's found the shot to be 66% effective at preventing moderate to severe illness. 85% effective though at preventing the most severe disease and 100% effective at preventing hospitalizations and death at least 28 days post vaccination. But while Johnson & Johnson's efficacy rate is lower, experts believe it still has a key role in getting us to the light at the end of the tunnel. In fact, infectious disease expert Dr. Anthony Fauci said the 100% effectiveness at preventing hospitalizations and death will save a lot of people. He recently told Americans that if a coronavirus vaccine is available, regardless of which one, just take it, saying a third vaccine becoming available is nothing but good news. And yes, that is a lot of information to just be thrown at you. So as always, I have helpful links in the description of this video. So read up on those if you need it or are interested. But that is all I have for you today. If you like this video, hit that like button. And of course, subscribe to our YouTube channel. I'm Jensen, and now you're in the loop.